Thank you. Thank you very much. Is it a comfortable volume of my voice? Loud? <laughs> okay, I will try to be loud. And uh, Jason uh, just uh, suggested to me that uh, I should be a dessert now, so I will try to be sweet. And I even <laughs> uh, changed a bit um, the plan just for a moment to um, <clears throat> not to talk, not to start with the uh, user culture and uh, my hero, p -Man, but um, <clears throat> to mention that I also, yeah, in my, in my in other life, I am uh, an artist who is uh, very, very much, oh, it's the wrong link. Uh, now I need the link to emulator. Where can I find it? Yeah, sorry. Posted there. No, where am I? No, it's somewhere. Just a moment. I was posting the links. Yeah, it's here, of course. I'm not crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, that in my uh, another life, I am an artist who works online since 20 years, and of course, at this moment, I am uh, like incredibly benefiting uh, from the uh, from the emulation projects, like what you see now in uh, on the screen, is uh, uh, Windows starting, and now there even better thing will happen, more important than Windows. Something else will start, the most beautiful browser in the world. Do you know that the most beautiful browser in the world is? Not what is this icon on there, but this one. Yeah, it's a Netscape, and this is, uh, and it also immediately loaded my uh, work. My boyfriend came back from the war, uh, loaded in in the browser that uh, the work, uh, work was created for. So then I made it. I made it for this environment. I made it for the frame sets that would have these borders, these visible borders, and, uh, so, and for this resolution, so it's uh, 800 to 600. And uh, for me, it now, you know, 20 years uh, after, uh, this work, uh, this project, it works perfectly. Yeah, it is online, it is accessible, uh, you can enjoy it, but I sort of, I can't enjoy it anymore as it is now online because I don't like the browser around it. I don't like that screen is so huge and it's just everything, you know, too big and connection is too fast. So when I'm to show my work in, in some uh, real space, then uh, with uh, great pleasure, uh, I use it as Klaus uh, mm, explained, boot it from the USB stick and then everything as it, uh, uh, as it would make sense happens. Also, let me please mention something else. I'm very happy that I have another work that is from 97 and uh, in 2008 it was restored and I would like to say that uh, the person who made it, Ella Vasotska from Warsaw, she is here now in the room and so if you, and uh, so she made it in 2008, it was one of the earliest net art restorations and uh, the work still functions properly. So if you need a knowledgeable, competent uh, restorator, she is in this room. So thank you, Ella, for doing this. <laughs> yeah. And now let's go to, <laughs> to <coughs> digital folklore, to the, um, user culture uh, to small, weak, and stupid as notions to preserve, retrieve, and understand World Wide Web heritage. This is what I'm busy with uh, the last years. And um, I would like to say that, um, connecting it to our uh, topic, that uh, Bond Digital Culture, Bond Digital, it's uh, quite an elegant and uh, comfortable term. Uh, more, it's more Mm, how to say, it's nicer and uh, easier and more uh, comprehensible than such terms, other words combination that surround us, for example, new media or even net art or that, that I have a lot to do with, or the digital culture itself. So Bond Digital, sort of everybody understands what is uh, meant, yeah, like 
let's say now the um, the whole earth catalog digitized and uh, online as PDF file it is uh, it's not bond digital, right? It is digitized. And the net time mailing list, or like you mentioned now, RISOM mailing list, it is a born uh, digital culture. Um, another example would be um, what other examples exist, uh, like a minority report on CD-ROM is, uh, is uh, not born digital, and uh, the Teresa Duncan CD-ROMs are born digital culture. The website, what you can see here now, the wedding website restored uh, recently by us. This is a born uh, digital. And uh, the old uh, analog of, um, wedding photo, I don't know, of your grandparents in the image frame is, uh, is not. Yeah, this is sort of the, uh, there is a consensus about it. Uh, but let me, just for a moment, uh, give to you, to try to uh, give to you another example. Again, the, uh, this wedding photo uh, that was analog and then put in digital frame, or maybe the photo on your computer, um, as, an, as one example, and another is the photo on Instagram. Yeah, selfie or not selfie, group selfie, whatever. And here you would also say immediately, yeah, one is digitized and uh, another is born digital. But I would uh, actually now try to argue the opposite and would claim that uh, your selfie or even the album full of selfies on Instagram, it is a digitized uh, ERL, as we would say, and the uh, uh, analog photo put in the digital frame or put on your computer and then put somewhere, I don't know, you give, gave it back to your grandmother maybe within this digital frame and she puts it on, your, on her table or maybe you put it on your table, whatever. There can be different scenarios that these are the precious, precious born digitals. Uh, because I think that uh, the born digital uh, objects or the born digital phenomena, let's say, they are phenomenal only when you can see, then you can sense and you can feel the process of being, the process of being born. Then somebody gave birth to, to the digital. When you, let me go into this, when you see labor, pain, when you see uh, parenthood, and not, uh, and then it's not just you know surrogate mothers everywhere like this global surrogacy that we have now with Facebook and uh, Instagram. I really think that they are on the way, on our way to experience the digital, to experience digital maternity, if one can say like this, to experience uh, giving birth to digital. Uh, to digital objects, to digital content, as Klaus would say, to digital culture. Uh, there is, um, it's important moments for me uh, when we, because when, I t when we talk about, not about art projects, but about the user culture and what has to be found and rescued online. Of course, you know, with this uh, metaphors now, you have excused me maybe for this, I'm a uh, trained journalist, right? And I'm also the mother of three children. I, can, I could continue now to go compare uh, digitizing and giving birth to something and could maybe even bring you to the tears. But uh, think the statements I would like to, say, uh, to make now, they are maybe more simple, can be phrased uh, in, a, in a more simple, pro prosaic way. It is not uh, uh, digital, it is not online service, uh, online hosting services uh, that are producing digital culture. And uh, it is not, and also your selfie, it is not uh, uh, born digital culture, but you screwing around with the selfie stick maybe is uh, digital, is a born digital culture. And the culture that is interesting for um, research. It's also important uh, to um, to say that um, wait there was something else 
I wanted, yeah, and of course, that's what, what this is the main thing. Uh, we, the process of creating uh, and participating in digital culture, it shouldn't be our overshadowed by its artifacts in no way. And also, in no way we should um, underestimate uh, the process of digital reformatting and digitizing in born digital culture. And I think uh, I, I maybe had to, uh, I planned to talk more about it, to explain more, but I think after Jason Scott, it was quite clear, yeah, that digitize, digitize, bring it to the another format, it's important. And also that's why uh, I opened for you now this, um, maybe not so significant web page from our archive, not the most uh, colorful and spectacular one, but it is because of the phrase that you can um, read here, I'll try to change this every week as I can get things scanned, the uh, author of the page says. I can show here another one. And here the young man from Barcelona asks to uh, sell to him a I'm looking for a color scanner. If you know any shop or do you want to sell one, please email me. So nobody sold to him the color scanner. That's why this page was not, uh, it didn't become any brighter or it was the last moment of this page. Yeah, so this is a, here you can sense a bit of the tragedy and the importance of, of uh, all these scanners and then later digital cameras and other devices for creating uh, this born digital content. Um, the web pages, personal web pages, personal websites, home pages, I would uh, argue that they are the most born digital from all born digital stuff we, you can find. Uh, because uh, they are you know, this is uh, uh, home pages. They were, um, they're the most, uh, they belong to this environment completely. You can even say they are the environment. You know, the web pages are the web. There can't be something more authentic online than web pages. Another thing is another great important uh, thing is that um, uh, the web pages, uh, this is a unique, it is a unique new format. You can talk about analogies and uh, even about metaphors that were used, that even Page suggests that there, was, there is an analogy, there uh, some, was something before, it tries to be like something else. Uh, but in fact, the format was uh, unprecedented and new. The hypertext uh, um, graphical um, inter interconnected pages, um, that uh, was completely new way to present yourself and uh, as an object, um, they are absolutely new. And also the way they were made the, also technically and uh, the conditions in which they existed, the ideological and also the philosophy around, all this is extremely important uh, and also in the context of uh, preserving and accessing um, them in the context of uh, our um, conference here. One can notice that here, when we talk about the web pages, it's not only about hardware and uh, software getting obsolete in times, but about the fact that all these things were produced uh, while software and hardware also was getting obsolete every uh, every week. So it was uh, the process of creating something and uh, res uh, restoring it was going hand in hand. This was, you were all the time, you were your own uh, restorator and you, you were preserving yourself uh, every week with new, every new version of the browser and um, yeah, with every new pl plugin. So this is a very special and very interesting condition but not only this, so it was happening, but it was also happening in the atmosphere that there was no respect to it. You were supposed not uh, to do it, you were supposed to, uh, on contrary, just to produce something new all the time. Yeah, and uh, <coughs> the, uh, when we talk about the um, philosophy around it, yeah, these people, why they, in general I am going into it, why it is of so much interest. Um, the, <coughs> these pages, uh, these are 
Each of them is an attempt to uh, answer to, first of all, people are uh, literally building the cyberspace. Yeah? They uh, feel responsible and they are uh, answering these existential questions all the time. Yeah, am I good enough to make, to have a web page? Yeah, what, what I'm going to tell to the world? And if you, yeah, you can t make it about nirvana. You can, uh, if you realize that you are not interested in yourself, uh, you can make it for your dog. Um, another greatest thing, and look please at this, uh, uh, and uh, the next one is also goes in the, sec uh, in, the, in the same direction, and even here, it's uh, with the sound. On uh, each of them, you could see that there are users on their home pages. The only content there is to provide the links to the search engines. Yeah, this is a special thing. First of all, you see on the page that there are more than one search engine in the world. And second, the uh, person is uh, uh, giving you the way. So you are the Google that is providing uh, access to the others. Yeah, there is, um, <coughs> of course, there is a lot of stars there, but it's not, my research is not only about the stars, though if you know my work, you could think that uh, I'm really obsessed with them, but yeah, I'm now going deep and deep, and I can tell you that uh, in Cape Canaveral neighborhood, the stars are very different to the stars in the Area 51 neighborhood. Uh, they are, so to say, more, um, more applied here. Here, re people really need the uh, mean here. They don't mean cyberspace with the stars. They mean the, the universe. Yeah, so this um, making the web pages, uh, building really, literally houses online, or as the title suggests here, the castle online. This is a culture that is uh, extremely important for me and it's in the uh, center of my research and I started to I started to collect actually this uh, pages already 15 years ago uh, so it was yeah 99 2000 and it was uh, time that uh, they started to disappear and it is time then in fact nobody really cared even I didn't really care and then there was a maybe you remember the um, some time after um, Web 2.0, there was, a, was again the hype. People were interested in under construction science, in uh, animated GIFs, uh, in um, <coughs> just in imitating the um, style of the early web pages. So there was a wave of the interest. And um, then again, there was um, like the huge wave of. Uh, um, uh, of, of ignorance, and it also resulted uh, in the <coughs> resulted in uh, Yahoo uh, killing uh, GeoCities, for example. Yeah, and then uh, it was also the huge effort of archive team that um, uh, rescued the files, and then we downloaded them with Dragon, and then we could restore them. Uh, we could make, start to make sense out of it, and of course we are also giving them back to you. Yeah? You can uh, see every 20 minutes a new screenshot from our archive. So there are already more than 60,000 posted since February uh, 2013. Uh, the great thing about GeoCities as a uh, snapshot of the early web is that now you can see it's already 2000, but pages still look like a 1996. So it's a very special environment. And if you follow uh, this blog, you can, you can enjoy it. So there, there is, it's also my interface. If you go there, you will not see it. But for me, it is an interface. I can go to this page. And uh, if we are connected, and I can see it. Uh, we are, as I, so for me, GeoCities are up and running, but it's only because I have the, um, the, the proxy there. Um, I should also say, yeah, uh, of course I should say now I have uh, to thank, to use this ch chance to thank Jason Scott, to thank Dragon, who is working on GeoCities archive, and he is not working on the, uh, for Ryzen. I should also uh, thank Klaus for 
allowing us to use computers uh, in Freiburg University, because this uh, GeoCity is what you could see. Now, this is, uh, it's in Freiburg, it's on the computers in uh, Freiburg. Yeah, so making <coughs> sense out of them, um, they, many of them now, today is the last day of our exhibition in Dortmund, where we show what we could interpret, what we could recover. Uh, this is Area 51. Of course, uh, great uh, works by our uh, Chinese colleague from Hong Kong who is interpreting the Chinese web, also could be found here. These are real signs. Uh, it is, you know, here it is not about uh, uh, animated GIFs or star backgrounds. It's analysis of Backstreet Boys uh, websites, fan websites. So how did people construct it? What was the um, what was the logic behind it? How many images? How many links? And um, uh, so on. And of course, the P-Man uh, is the central piece of this exhibition, put in there big. But in fact, he's very small. And this is how I go now to the, uh, to the first keyword that uh, I suggest you to think about today. So, um, uh, P-Man is a graphic that was used on many web pages. It was appearing in such context. Yeah, the, with, uh, it is, uh, let's say, it was sort of a um, dislike button of that time. If you didn't like something, you would you'd put a P-Man and you would show your attitude uh, to whatever things. Um, there, <coughs> in our archive, there are 753 P-Men. Yeah, what we could uh, detect. Um, we found out the 753 um, icons and sometimes words that the P-Man was uh, peeing on at that time. Um, as I, I told you, there is not a lot to conclude about it. You now see this, that yeah, the Ford was the most disliked uh, thing at that time, but uh, not, I, I can't say at, at that time. I just say that what we, from what we have in the archive, uh, P-Man most of all beat on the Ford. Of course, there is also Bill Gates and Steve Jobs and Explorer and Apple and GeoCities logo itself, but it just happened to be uh, uh, Ford. Yeah, and then we took all this... Uh, we put him on the wall, it's in uh, Stuttgart, and in Dortmund it looks like this. So he's uh, uh, 1 meter 70, so just a bit smaller uh, than I am. And uh, here on the old screen, there are uh, all these logos, they are uh, in, in slideshow. And we can, so this is uh, the way to present our research. He is uh, going and uh, uh, being on them all the time. Um, and then I uh, talk about um, a small, why it is important, this notion of uh, not just uh, small as a uh, keyword for the research. Of course, I don't only mean that uh, this graphic was small or not on, that this topic is un un unimportant, uh, but mostly that um, <coughs> uh, this small, it is as opposite to to big data, yeah? I could now call it, sometimes I call it the small data research. And again, it's not so much because this uh, GIFs and pages are mm, relatively small, but um, to <coughs> oppose the way big data research is usually made, the way data is retrieved there, so with a lot of, um, let's say, too much respect to the uh, algorithm and to the formal parameters and to the computational power. And I have here the um, quote from the book that has actually nothing to do with big data research. It is uh, from 1961. It is by the <coughs> important uh, US uh, librarian of post-war era, uh, Mortimer uh, Taube, who was, who was making some pioneering work in uh, uh, res uh, in um, indexing and retrieval of information at that time. I should say I'm not very familiar with this, uh, uh, with his work in this 
field, uh, but uh, I know him as a critic of uh, artificial intelligence of that time, and it's very early, it's 61, and critic of the field of machine translation or mechanical translation, as he called it. And his point was he was criticizing the this um, belief that computers will be able very soon to translate from one language to another. Because there was an idea that if uh, computers were successful in crypt cryptography, then they would be great with languages. But uh, computers are not labeled, able to deal with the context. And it's a known example also from his book that he says that now in 61, after so many millions are um, thrown away to teach computers to translate, no machine can uh, resolve polysemy of uh, the pen is in the box and the box is in the pen. Yep, so the uh, two meanings of word pen are under not understandable for the computer. Uh, I read this article with students every semester and every semester we try Google Translator if they can do it now. And it still didn't happen. Yeah, so. Uh, it is still the trouble to give so much uh, power to algorithms and to believe that something will be mm, done by smart uh, computers. Um, and also why I have it now, maybe you have not had no time to read it, his um, idea was, um, oh, here is the main, the main thing is down here, that maybe all this money did, uh, were, would be better not to spend all this money for teaching computers to translate, but to educate translators. And uh, another idea that maybe even you don't, if you spend all this money on education in languages, you will not even need translators because everybody can translate. And you can now ask me what, what it has to do with the uh, PMEN uh, and uh, uh, re research the way I try to do it, and I will answer that it was very important that there was no algorithm that could find for me what, what PMEN was being on. It was, first of all, it was not possible because how people made their web pages, it's not semantic web. Yeah? It's not metadata. You only, if you think that on the page these pictures are next to each other, but they are not. It can be whatever in between. So there was me and there were students who were going through the pages and looking for them and finding them out. And uh, so we made it. It took time. It took, uh, um, let's say, many people. But we made it. And what, but the main result is not that we found it, but that, <clears throat> that in the end, I now have uh, six students. And uh, yeah, it's not so much maybe, but it's a lot. Yeah? Six people, six young people who can surf. Yeah, they can go from one page to another. And this is a skill uh, which is absolutely vanishing at this moment. So these people can surf. And also by doing this, they learned a lot from the early, about the early web. So, so by, looking, by uh, uh, making this, um, uh, accomplishing this, uh, small task, they actually learned a lot. And now, after they made it, I can uh, communicate with them as people who have experience in early web. So this is the way to make it. And uh, another, of course, another meaning of uh, small is um, <coughs> that, yeah, we do with the small graphic, the small web pages, and we try to make them really big. I really like this moment in the exhibition in Dortmund that six big men had to put up the curtain for, uh, for the projection that this small man uh, would be going around. There are, of course, a lot of, um, I would suggest to you this link here, because there are many other um, things to see. Um, I will just shortly show to you another small um, research when it is about this small graphic or this one, the graphics that I'm following for uh, many years already. And uh, by this, I'm, I'm st starting with this, I'm sort of, I'm creating the timeline of animated GIFs, starting from the dancing girl in red, or from another, another hero of mine, this one that was very popular. And so I'm not trying to uh, find everything. And of course, I'm not trying to apply some algorithm to uh, to show the um, to, to show the development of uh, 
uh, give um, genres. But uh, with my eyes, with my experience, I, like every three years I'm successful and I find something that, uh, that helps me to uh, make statements that uh, this is how the uh, how GIFs were developing, so projects like this, or even go into them <coughs> more, to, to even to smaller things. Yeah, I'm following the clear GIFs, invisible GIFs, the GIFs that um, amateur amateurs were using to make the layouts of their pages, but they were um, because there was no CSS and no other stuff, and all this small, you know, like this invisible pixel here, but you, maybe you can see it a bit. Yeah, This is uh, the one that is also on GeoCities. This one is now killed, but there is another one in clip after GeoCities, and this one you will also be able to see if you go online mm, without even without proxy, because it's, uh, yeah, because it's still there. Yahoo didn't dare to kill this one. They, uh, <laughs> I would say, the, yeah, everything is removed but this one is uh, still there. And all this invisible stuff is, of course, in, 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 incredibly, incredibly important. And when we talk about small again, there is another small thing. So small as in, uh, uh, in Russian it's called Malinki uh, Chelovek, the little man, and a very important figure for Russian literature of the 19th century. And uh, when we talk about the little man of our times, it would be, of course, the user the user who is um, making the web page, the GeoCities user, not an expert user, yeah? but the user as we all are. And there is, uh, in, uh, <coughs> in my work, there is a lot uh, made to give credit to the users and to show that they are doing this culture. So if I am, it is now, you remember that Blingy was almost closed um, a month ago, but then it's, the, the service where you can make such pictures. Yeah? And then it didn't happen. And uh, then so the idea is, my idea was to talk to the users and they made a beautiful interview, beautiful not because of the interview, but because of the person who agreed to talk to me. And she is an important uh, Blingy user, the one who is uh, making stamps, the, the one who is uh, creating glitter that uh, everybody else is using them. So the thing is, uh, my point was, I don't know if you're familiar th with this case. Do you know Blingy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this is where you, it's sort of Photoshop for, um, for those who wants to make everything online and glitter. Yeah, so the idea was to talk to, uh, the important is to talk to the users, not to talk to the, not to talk to the creators of the services. And then there is the next term, and it would be weak. And uh, <coughs> we will not maybe go now into philosophy, but the weak is borrowed from uh, weak, um, uh, <coughs> uh, weak fo thought philosophy, important postmodernist philosophy. And uh, it's also the term was coined by um, Vatimo, uh, an Italian philosopher, and uh, he was uh, actually the um, student of uh, um, Gadama, the famous uh, German philosopher, in, uh, Bible interpreter, and the one who was, uh, for him, for whom hermeneutics was about the dialogue, about uh, uh, interpreting and finding the common ground with them object of your uh, interpretation. And, uh, uh, you know, I have a, I'm not a philosopher myself, but uh, I have an honor so to uh, make my thesis, uh, to, to have my thesis supervised by Siegfried Zielinski. And uh, he is very comfortable with uh, my approach to talk about philosophy, but to have uh, p men in constant dialogue uh, with the fire um, in the background. So he agrees that dialogue, um, philosophy of dialogue is the right uh, context to answer the questions, uh, what does it mean to make a web page? And this is a deep philosophical question. And when we talk about this weak thought, these interpretations, and um, <coughs> the dialogue, of course, you should mention again the William Flusser, he was also appearing today uh, in another project, an emulation, uh, who was um, talking about the future 
of uh, how things will be in the future in the electromagnetic world. Yeah, and uh, he was very optimistic, and he was talking about that texts, he was talking about the text that they will become soft, soft, or I would translate it weak, they will be plastic, that you, can, you, will have to, you will be able to manipulate, manipulate them. So there will be completely new process of writing texts and new dialogue culture and the great uh, new <coughs> uh, texts will emerge. And uh, he, of course, uh, he died before the World Wide Web. He uh, didn't, uh, he couldn't see uh, he couldn't see um, the P-man being on the uh, fire or on um, George Bush, uh, but this, uh, <clears throat> all these small, weak elements that the web pages are made for, of, um, this is exactly what we got in the end, and this is how the web was developing, that there was such elements you could recombine and you can build something out of them. And there was a very rich culture arising from this. Uh, here is an, um, the um, German artist, Hita Steil, she would call these images poor images, but also in a very positive sense. So these images that can, can be, they are going through the internet and they can be recombined and reused. So this one uh, also from one of the uh, early home pages. So you can see that they all are they all create here quite a strong scene because they are very weak. Um, this one, I will maybe <coughs> skip one, but it's from the Hives. Um, it is a Dutch network that was also closed, so not only JCTs were closed, but uh, also Hives. And uh, <coughs> the users of Hives were also very good in uh, recombining weak uh, in, in, this, uh, in making this weakness very strong, um, the <coughs> idea to combine, they could create real um, statements from the combination of background and, uh, uh, and user picture. This all this, uh, <coughs> I have it, uh, beautiful collection of this here. You can go through this. But what I made from this in this project, this is, so to say, it, and this is my weak thought, my weak approach to the, the content I have. Uh, I now, I take it and uh, I try to make something else out of it as well, and then show to you in all, it presented to you in all its beauty. Um, I just removed all the content and only left the background and the um, user pictures that you can enjoy it. Um, so uh, these are, <coughs> Or, or another thing to keep things in dialogue, you know, what is important uh, is uh, to bring all elements to the new web. And uh, this work is it's difficult to enjoy it uh, on the low resolution, but this is an old background. Maybe you know it, it's the silk that was used on so many uh, web pages in former times. And uh, I created several works there. I used these uh, old backgrounds, but I put them next to the video backgrounds that are so hip now on the internet. You know, the background today should be a video background. Um, so I created video backgrounds out of them and tried to keep them, th th by this, to keep them also in um, motion. More, maybe more understandable project about putting together old and new one is the one we made uh, ten years ago, exactly, on, no, nine years ago, exactly on this date. It was made for Halloween in 2006. Uh, and uh, at that time, uh, Google navigation bar was the newest thing. Yeah, and it changed dramatically the interaction online, how you see the interfaces. And this was, uh, for us, was clear at this moment that uh, now uh, people will completely start to forget the uh, navigation elements that were made by people themselves um, for the early pa in, for, the, for their first pages. So you can see here. Yeah, you can't zoom in and zoom out, but with your every movement, you will reveal the ancestors of navigation, um, of Google navigation, of Google Maps, 
and uh, made by people who did not believe in this back button. They didn't believe in home button. They didn't want to know what, uh, uh, what others uh, think about the structure. Another dialogue that we uh, uh, also dialogue with the past and with the future, what we um, uh, lead in GeoCities Research Institute can be found in this work. It's, uh, uh, it's called Once Upon, and we recreated Facebook, YouTube, and uh, what, was, what else, Google Plus, if it would be made, if they would be made in 1997. So it, you know, it's a bit different twist. We are not uh, reintroducing new old elements in the new web, but the opposite. How would it be in 1997? Yeah, of course it would be with frame sets. And of course you would only have 16 friends. It would be the limit, because more would not fit on the screen. But in fact, but maybe you don't need more friends, right? Maybe it would be enough. And then it's also, but it works, it functions. I showed you a screenshot, but it is online. And another very important dialogue, what is uh, uh, for me also, when I look at the web pages, is happening in between uh, pages that promise that soon they will be there. It's so to say, give me time pages. It's not just under construction, but that when people promise that soon when school starts, uh, I will finish this page. Or then, then summer breaks come, I will do it. Or when I get scanner on, and all other reasons. And then, or like something like this, or this is another example. And then there is another type of pages. This page has been closed down due to some reasons. Sorry for the inconvenience. So it is a definite goodbye. Yeah, I'm finishing now. And uh, for me, it's, of course, <coughs> I see them all the time next to each other. It's an incredibly dramatic dialogue in, in, inside the archive. And I made now this um, series of uh, slide projections. They both are next to each other. Um, yeah, the last term is stupid. And of course, I should tell you yeah, that in eyes of other people, we are just doing stupid things. We are read reading, it's Dragon. It's not only me, Dragon as well. Then he's not in rising. Yeah, we are, we are reading stupid books. We are looking at something, stupid pages, stupid graphics, not only GeoCities, but for example, new ones. I'm very much in the lyric videos uh, of YouTube when people make their own lyrics uh, to, the, um, to the known music. This one is for David Getter. This was also important because I think that uh, this is at this moment uh, the content, it's very contemporary digital folklore. Yeah, there are people make things that you can compare with making web pages. I also sit in front of uh, 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 my computer, this computer, with my handy, with my uh, mobile phone, and uh, I record uh, pages that are, have sound, because uh, there is no other way at this moment to do it. This I will skip in the moment, and uh, also I will say that, uh, yeah, so, but this is maybe not the main thing about this being um, stupid, not because in eyes of other people, the content we're dealing with this is stupid, but mostly because uh, I very much believe that you can't um, apply the smart algorithms, you can't apply perfect systems to the content and to the culture that was uh, very much against any uh, perfection and uh, metadata and um, also in, it's, you, you would never be able to call it uh, semantic web and also to apply all this stuff. So this is an important thing. So to make actions all the time, quite subjective actions, small actions to, <clears throat> to preserve it. And then also the stupid uh, important, of course, notion for our work, for our archive is uh, because we really believe that like in this ideal vision of stupid network where intelligence is on the edges, we will also be able to build out of GeoCities Research Institute the stupid network of the intelligent researchers who are going, uh, who are going into questions like this, who are not afraid to ask things like this and look for the answers. So contact me, please, if you're interested.
think. 